pandemic yeah. seems to be over. Late nights talking about it. Jimmy Kimmel said in New York, as more people are taking public transportation again, they've seen a sharp increase in subway cars caked with feces, garbage, blood and vomit. So in other words, New York City is back, everybody. Jimmy Kimmel, I wish that were more of a joke about the blood, vomit, feces and garbage in the subway. It is true. Jimmy Fallon said, if you're wondering whether it's safe to eat on the subway again, the answer is it was never safe to eat on the subway, Stephen Colbert, because herd immunity is commonly considered to be an achievement between 70 and 80 percent. New York State has lifted virtually all the COVID restrictions, including remaining capacity limits, social distancing, etc., which means that the pizza rat can finally dine inside again. Trevor Noah said as a New Yorker, I'm furious about the tables no longer being six feet apart. In New York restaurants put tables so close together that you're basically eating together. If you're next to a couple breaking up, now you're part of the breakup. When dinner's over, you got to go help him get his stuff out of her apartment. Trevor, if we're all going to pack into places again, let's at least keep those plexiglass partitions, please. They keep you separated from other people, and it lets you pretend that you're a hockey player sitting in a penalty box, you know? Makes me feel cool. I'm not just eating a hamburger. I'm serving two minutes for cross-checking. Fallon, the good news is the partitions will be gone. The bad news is they're going back to where they came from. The urinals. On his show, John Oliver made a case for canceling the Tokyo Olympics. One of his concerns is the vaccination rate in Japan remains in the single-digit percentages. Oliver said, I don't know what the target percentage should be to safely host the Olympics. I'm pretty sure right now it should be higher than the number of entries in the Fast and Furious franchise. He also took issue with the fact that the IOC has the sole authority to scrap the event, leaving Japan somewhat powerless to uh, get rid of the thing. Oliver compared it to attempting to reschedule a sick child's birthday party only to get overruled by the clown you hired. He did a clown impression saying, I don't care if you've got the bubonic plague from 2 to 5 p.m. You're on Bozo's clock. Oliver also took on local car dealerships and the way they make their ads. He showed one ad that featured a dealership owner saying a version of, I'm in a pickle. My doctor told me to calm down before my heart explodes. The only way for me to calm down is to help you get a nicer, newer car. And in the ad, the guy was dressed as a pickle. Next to the pickle man, someone dressed in a very creepy Uncle Sam costume. Oliver said, all right, I don't mind that. A guy dressed as a pickle next to an Uncle Sam that looks like Mark Cuban seeming to threaten if you don't buy a car from him, he's going to die. Oliver said, I actually like that. That's some fun local weirdness from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, that you're not just going to get anywhere else, right? Well, wrong. Oliver then showed six ads that were almost exactly the same with the same premise. One version of the ad even had the guy's daughter saying, but dad, your heart will explode. Oliver's team dug in and found that there's a firm in Orlando, Florida called Gravitational Marketing that sells scripts for local salespeople to use. Oliver is very upset about this, saying Don Draper would put a cigarette out on your forehead. But Oliver has a challenge of his own. He took out a manila envelope that said very good script on it. And he told the car dealerships they can use it for free if they agree to sign a contract acknowledging they'll use it in a commercial without reading it first. Oliver said, you have to agree to some simple terms. The main one being you have to agree to produce this exactly as written and you can't read it before you agree. We promise there's no cursing, blasphemy or nudity in here. It will pass broadcast standards in your area and it can be produced as cheaply as anything you've seen tonight on his show. Now, will this script show your dealership in a good light? That's for you to find out after you sign this contract and agree to produce and air the ad sight unseen. So who's interested? You know, someone's going to be interested. If your car dealership wants part of this, here is the email address. Pay attention. The email address is freecarcommercial at, all right, freecarcommercial at, John Oliver wants your rats erotica.com. That's right. It's freecarcommercial at John Oliver wants your rat erotica.com. <laughs> Congratulations to Stephen Colbert, winner of one of the 2021 Peabody Award winners. It was presented to him by his longtime friend, Steve Carell. Carell says he's known the enormously talented Colbert for more than 30 years, and that Colbert is the only Peabody Award winner whose car I've thrown up in. He's being honored for creating a TV show that not only entertains, but it serves a greater purpose. As a writer, performer, and satirist, he has the ability to distill a complicated situation into something funny. He knows that being able to laugh at the horrible absurdity of the world makes it bearable. In his acceptance speech, Colbert said, There's this parable I think about from the Gospel of Luke about the dangers of putting new wine in old bottles, which feels like what we've been trying to do here for the past six years. Take this format, which has been with us for almost 70 years, and put our new wine in it. I'm so gratified that you like this vintage. Now that I've used the wine metaphor, everything I drank during quarantine can be written off as a business expense. Now, I saw Colbert say the six years thing, and I was like, has Letterman been gone for six years? I looked it up. Yeah, Letterman stopped Lettermaning 
May of 2015. That's six years ago. Stephen Colbert's version of the show started that September, I think September 8th of 2015 from memory. But wow, six years with no Dave. Time flies. So the other night, you were at Madison Square Garden. You went to see the Foo Fighters. You were excited. You agreed with Dave Grohl's statement, which was, we've been waiting for this day for over a year. Madison Square Garden is going to feel that hard. New York, get ready for a long-ass night of screaming our heads off together for 26 years of Foo's. So there you are. It's Foo Fighters. And who walks out? Dave Chappelle. You did not see that coming. Dave Chappelle joined the Foo Fighters on stage for a version of Radiohead's Creep. Okay. Um, if I'm a big Foo Fighters fan, not sure I want Dave Chappelle showing up and singing. Like, I'm a big Springsteen fan. I don't need, I don't know who, Jerry Seinfeld coming by and singing Born to Run or a cover song of uh, Radiohead's Creep. I don't need that. Also, if I'm at a Dave Chappelle show, I don't want the Foo Fighters showing up. Keep it separate. Pizza and ice cream, folks. Do you like the Los Angeles Lakers? Or a show that's sort of kind of about the Los Angeles Lakers? The Hollywood Reporter says Mindy Kaling will serve as the executive producer of an untitled Netflix comedy based on the Lakers. Or maybe it's not about the Lakers. Netflix describes the series as following Eliza Reed, the governor of a fictional team, as she navigates NBA ownership and family drama with her best friend by her side. One of the executive producers is the controlling owner of the Los Angeles Lakers. That's interesting. No cast yet, no release date yet. Variety tells us the fourth and final installment of the Hotel Transylvania franchise, this one called Hotel Transylvania Transformania. It'll now debut in October. Why October as opposed to July 23rd? October is Halloween season, in case you didn't realize it. This movie will see Drac and the rest of the monsters embark on a brand new adventure full of twists and turns when a new invention created by Van Helsing, voiced by Jim Gaffigan, when that invention transforms all the monsters into humans and Johnny into a monster, Johnny voiced by Andy Samberg, they must work together to switch back before the change becomes permanent. Some other people in this movie, along with Gaffigan and Samberg, Mac Packer, Keegan, Michael Key, Steve Buscemi, David Spade, Fran Drescher, Molly Shen, and very exciting. Apple TV Plus has released the trailer for The Shrink Next Door. This series teams up Will Ferrell and Paul Rudd. It is inspired by the true story of Marty and the therapist who turned his life around and then took it over. When he first meets Dr. Ike, Marty just wants to get better at boundaries. Over 30 years, he'll learn all about them and what happens when they get crossed. The Shrink Next Door debuts November 12th. All right, coming up is the break. On the other side of the break, I'm going to talk about a Pixar movie called Luca. I don't want to spoil it for you, so if you have not seen Luca and you're worried about spoilers, you may bail on the podcast now. I don't intend to say anything specific about the movie. I'm just going to give a vibe review, but I don't want to ruin it for you. So Luca's coming up. I'm also going to talk about Gilbert Gottfried had on Weird Al and Joe Rogan had on David Lee Roth. And I'm going to tell you what Borat was up to. So that's on the other side of the break. But the next thing I'm going to talk about is Luca. You've been warned. Possible spoilers for Luca coming up, although not really. I just want to talk vibe. I love this thing. I want you to watch it. It's on Disney Plus, Pixar's Luca. Uh, I'll give everybody a week and then I'll talk about why I loved it, but I really loved it. The one thing that I didn't think about it was one of the characters is voiced by Jim Gaffigan. And as I was watching the movie, I was like, wait, I recognize that voice. Who is it? Who is it? And then once I realized who it was, I couldn't unhear it. I mean, it was Jim Gaffigan doing his well, hello, I'm Jim Gaffigan voice, that kind of voice. And it just, I don't know, it just it kept taking me out of it. Luckily, Jim Gaffigan's not in the movie all that much. But other than that, love this thing. You should watch Luca. We'll talk about that maybe Monday. OK, you got till Monday to watch Luca on Disney+. Plus. Gilbert Gottfried had on Weird Al. I'm a huge Weird Al fan. Now, one thing about Gilbert Gottfried's podcast that always cracks me up is Gilbert apparently does zero preparation and apparently pays no attention. A guest could come on and be like, yeah, and then when my mother died at seven, that changed my whole life. And Gilbert's follow-up would be like, and you were on Gilligan's Island once, right? And it's like, did you even hear what the person just said? Yeah, and then that's, um, you know, then uh, my entire family was murdered. And you were on the Hollywood Squares with Paul Lynn. Is that correct? And it's like, Gilbert, did you not pay any attention at all? But they had on Weird Al, and Weird Al did Weird Al things. Very nice listen. But I do want to publicly scold the Gilbert Gottfried staff. When I downloaded the podcast on Monday, Weird Al's last name was spelled with an H at the end, as in Yankovic. It's not how he spells his name. Typos happen. 
But somebody went out of their way to put an H there. That's not Apple autocorrecting something. That's somebody thinking the guy's name is Weird Al Yankovic. And you're Gilbert Gottfried's podcast. It's a comedy podcast. The people that work on it should know comedy. Typos happen, but you can't make that mistake. It's Weird Al Yankovic. Get it right. The other thing I listened to was David Lee Roth on Joe Rogan's podcast. I'm a big Van Halen fan. David Lee Roth is one of those people I could listen to him all day. And I almost listen to him all day because he was on Rogan for three hours. And Dave's just one of those colorful speakers where he's just talking and you get to the end of a sentence. You have no idea what he was even talking about, but it was entertaining the whole way. One of my favorite lines attributed to Dave was when he left Van Halen way back in the 80s. He was talking about the Van Halen brothers and he said, you guys keep on raining and I'll keep having my parade. And that's like a David Lee Rothism. Just imagine three hours of guys talking in semi code like that. Very entertaining. So uh, listen to Weird Al with Gilbert. Listen to Rogan and David Lee Roth and definitely watch Luca. You've got a week. Now, if you were in Sydney, I don't know how you got to Sydney. There's a pandemic and stuff, but I'm glad you were there. And if you were in the right place, Sasha Baron. Aaron Cohen walked in and did Borat at a comedy club. A show attender told the Daily Telegraph, Borat was a surprise guest at the end of the showcase. There were about 100 people in there. They're trying something new. And audience members said that everyone had to place their phones in locked pouches to help make sure the performance wasn't leaked. So far, it has not been leaked. The insider said Sasha had everyone in stitches. Eliza Schlesinger is on Jimmy Kimmel tonight. Graham Norton on Late Night with Seth Meyers. And that is your comedy news for today. You can follow this podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your shows. See you tomorrow. And I'll just tell you now that we're at the end. This was take two of this podcast. The first recording failed. I had my mic on mute and I'm such an idiot. Ugh.